God is faithful in all things. Always. Doing fire. Call I. Cross power movement. Landside ever ready. And enable it once again. No pain. No gain. In the midst of the madness, you said that you are there. And when the darkness surrounds me, and it seems like no one cares, you prepare it to table before me and annihilate my fears. Now I know. Considering that everything is meant to be like, um, yeah, not going out and whatever, there is a lot of people around. I mean, shit, where I am at, I have not seen like any people whatsoever. But um, there's a lot of people around. Funny that. When you tell people not to do something, I guess what they're gonna do? Do the opposite to us. Right. Just gotta make sure it's all silver. No one has um, done anything to it. And my main concern really is um, fucking dickheads with drones. So they just fly over shit and just see everything. So all of this here 
this whole entrance in here is going to go up, all these little shoots and all that stuff. Um, I mean, by the harvest time, it's all overgrown into it still. Come and sort it out a little bit. Put some better fencing, which is what these sticks is for. And um, yeah, just progressively bring stuff down here. And then the plants will come next and whatever. So I guess I kind of showed it last year, but the drip system. So, what the drip system does is basically it's a gravity kind of fed system. Um, I need to sort it out a bit, but I'll do that when I come and plant. Sort these fences out a bit, fences around here. But um, basically, got the water part up here. Just down there is the um, tap hole. Got the little, um, whatever you want to call that thing, drip irrigation pipe that I've glued into here. Comes from here and feeds down into the Sorry, I think it's up here. I have something wandering over there anyway. I don't see any people when I come up here, so it must be the peoples. Um, what I mean by seeing lots of people is like wandering up and down the roads and shit. Because of my bike and stuff. Sorry if you can hear them off in the distance or whatever. Okay. We will be cracking on with some fencing, doing some bits and pieces to um, kind of tidy it up. So, I mean, as you can kind of see, all these little shoots coming around here, all this stuff, that's all just going to grow up and over here. Sure this I don't think it's peeping. I don't know whether these people I might have to go and have a little wander down and check just to make sure. So obviously speaking and then people can hear it. So um yeah. Let me just go and do a little bit of scouting and make sure that um there's no one beckoning around where I'm at. Back in a bit. Uh so yeah, so no no people. It's just uh, it's running around, actual adversary that I'm having to fight with at the moment. Uh, stop them for eating fucking my plants. Right, just need a drink. Pretty hot today. Fuck's sake. Right handed, but I had to use my left hand. So, we need to do some processing. Because. As good as the sticks are, we've chopped them down and got them to the right size and whatever. You actually need them to be um, suitable for going into the ground itself. So, basically, what we're going to do with these is we're going to kind of mushroom the um, mushroom the bottoms. I need to keep this wire. Yeah, we're going to mushroom the bottoms so that when we smash them into the ground, with This is a good axe. This is a very good axe. But anyway, I don't do reviews of tools and shit like that. It's just tools, man. Tools is tools. It's the person who's using the tools that makes the tools good or bad. Um, but yeah, we're going to mushroom the sticks out. So at the bottoms down here, where they where they go in the ground, and they're kind of like I'll show you in a minute. But they chip it away, so then it's all kind of like um, not a spike, but like kind of like um flat ish you'll see um so that when we hit it into the ground it's not like a flat surface that's going to the ground um it's got a little bit more give and it makes it stronger there's a little thing i did to um just to carry it to make it a bit easier for myself it's not that they're really heavy but it's still fucking awkward to carry this is pieces of willow that I cut off a tree not particularly straight but reasonably as straight or as straight as you can get 
um, left to dry out in the sun, just standing up. Um, see that? Yeah, left to dry out in the sun for a little bit. But yeah, they'll make our stakes, and then we're gonna stake up all around here, stake out these a little bit more. Um, a bit annoyed that the fence doesn't quite sit level, but the ground's not level. I can't really get it to come down more than that. I might be able to put a bit more fencing on there and whatever. And this time, rather than using my cutters to cut the wire, though they have a uh, thing on it. Um, where are they? Where are you cutters? Though they have this little bit just at the bottom, just there for cutting the wire, um, it's not that easy to do. I've got a pair of cutters with me to cut the wire, make it a bit easier for myself. Right tool for the right job and so on and so forth. Oh yeah, let me just sort some of these sticks out and then I'll come back and I'll show you what I mean by um, kind of mushrooming off the tops. You know it. <coughs> right, so. That's basically what I've done, just um, taking the edge around so then it diverts the grain into a different way. So if you're thinking of like smashing something that's flat, all of that's just going to peel back like this. And that will happen to the grain of the wood as well when you're smashing it into the ground. Whereas that's diverted all the grain so that um, yeah, when you hit it in the ground it just makes it easier. It doesn't take very long, kind of dome the top a little bit. But yeah, just little things, little things to make your life easier and make it last a little bit longer. So hopefully put this fence up once, as long as no one finds the site. Um, put it up once and then I can just maintain it from there on. The stick should be fine. I've done a, a fair amount of them, still got a fair amount left, but you know. We'll see how many we need in the long run. But um, yeah. Fencing. With that shit it's not easy um it's messy and um it wants to uncoil itself and whatever so you just have to find your way if you're going to try and put fencing up as to um how you best do it i can't really film that because i don't have a tripod and i'm not really here to do that I'm just showing kind of bits and pieces of um, what i'm out here doing but yeah all right so we're gonna rack that open stick some fencing around um bash in the stakes pretty simple stuff and then we'll have a dual layer of um, fencing so the perimeter fence and then the internal fence and hopefully that should be enough to stop um, the deer from coming in and eating everything hopefully we'll see <laughs> we'll see but yeah in a bit right so one left of the first lot these little ones are not particularly good if you can um, if you're gonna go out and find some of these yourself might be worthwhile getting some that are about as thick as your thumb to make things a little bit easier. Also, um, I'll show you what I mean by not mushrooming off the top. <coughs> so when you hit it, that happens. Yeah, the fence runs up and along like that. Around here, it gets to the end and I've just pinned it around the tree on the other side so it's it's fairly tight. I could probably do with being a bit tighter. I could probably get this out and make it a bit tighter maybe. Might not be wholly necessary. <clears throat> I don't see a lot of like rabbits, I just see a shitload of deers. So if I can keep them out that's all I really need. So then um put some more on the back there. And then we're done with the fencing really. Tighten this out. I know it doesn't seem like it's tight, but trying to get it taut is not easy. You need a string or something to pull that shit back. But yeah, it's what it is. At least it's something. Better protection than last year where it just got fucking nommed. Um, but yeah, do the back fencing now. Simple, easy thing to do. Doesn't cost a lot of money time really to go and collect the sticks and buy the fence. I mean I think that was like a 25 meter roll of that galvanized green fence. Can't really see it. I mean even me sat here looking down on it can't really see it. 
and it's it's wire. It's not like it's um like it's cheap plastic or anything. It's um decent gardening wire. Um, yeah, you can't really see it, which is an added bonus. I mean, if it was like silvery and all that stuff, then um, there's a potential chance that you could see it more. But yeah, pretty much what it looks like. Little walkway, and then from there, what I can do is I can just you know keep this ground here down here clean of all the crap that grows up and then just chop off the sides to let me get down in here should this keep for a couple of seasons at least um, but yeah and then I'll come and bring you Jehovah, 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 forever and ever and ever and ever Amen yeah. Jehovah Nisi, you may be born a Jehovah Chira, me provider Jehovah Rafa, you may be heal and me call him black by cause I'm a teacher Always present Jehovah Shama, my Kaddish, I'm a sanctifier Jehovah Shalom, you may be peace, so make me trumble the peace Put you on in a deal, but in your mouth and help me shout out Jehovah This is my makeshift gate. I basically staked in the ground there. Put a bit of wire around here. And do that. I'll show you. Why not? And I can walk through and access all of this. Kind of comes to an end there. Same on the other side. To join those two together as well. Yeah, join those two together to keep our socket from breaking. Fencing in and around that area. So we've got a primitive fence and then a protective fence around the plants. And that should be enough to keep the fucking deer out. It's only luck anyway. Um, absolute mission with that wire, but um, what I would suggest, just for practicality purposes, is if you're going to get wire, get square wire. It just makes it really easy to cut a straight line to it with the um I don't know the kind of whatever shape that is the round shape um it's a little bit more messy uh, easy to kind of cut along in a diagonal rather than a straight um this is why I chose this wire uh, just from experience of cutting the wire um it just makes it a bit quicker when you're trying to get in and out quickly and all in all um not taking me that much longer than what you've seen on this video um, I mean it's taken about probably would take about the same time as it's taken to do this video um, bearing in mind that I'm making it then stopping then doing it then stopping then showing it then so on and so forth but yeah you can't really see it I mean you can see the sticks more than you can see anything else so this should be good um, should last and should um, hold up but we'll see um, so yeah, right, I'm going to join that last bit up there, and I am going to close the gate, go and smoke this. Alright, back in a bit. Alright, so, we are done. Fence is done, groundwork's done, had a look at the plants so far, a couple of them got chomped by fucking little bars of snails and slugs, so I love those things so much. And uh, we haven't managed to get torn to crap in the process today, so that was quite nice. Um, it's nice not having loads of brambles stuck in you, surprisingly enough. Anyway, I'm going to find a little spot to 
sit down and smoke this. Somewhere nice and pleasant. And uh, just make sure you clean up. So anything you take out to a site, if it's not necessary to stay there, then, um, you know, take it with you. Remove it. Keep the space as innocuous as possible. Because um, you're trying to make it look like um, really no one's in there. Well, I mean, do whatever you want, really. It's suggestions as well. All right. It's a great dead ferret. Uh, ferret, pheasant there. Natural causes, circle of life, life and death. Don't know what got it. Doubt it was a shotgun. Uh, it could have been. Could have been. I've seen some shotgun shells up and around here. Where can I go and sit? Well, as good as any. Roughly not around dead shit. There's a lot of dead birds up in here. Alright. So, one of my grow bags. These are awesome things, these grow bags. Truly, truly wonderful things. Sorry, people. Alright. Let's this up. Kind of looks like in a bag. It's a bit hard to see, but... It smells good, it tastes good, and it's yummy. So, anyway, that kind of concludes... Um, be a little bit about the gardening and whatever, showing you off over that stuff. I'll light this up and have a bit of a chat. So if you're not interested in anything to do with God, you've got no interest whatsoever as to what's going on other than what the media is telling you, it's probably best to end it here. And um, I don't know, unsubscribe, go do something else, who knows. Not doing this for the purpose of gaining fame, like I've said many, many times before. It's not about fame, it's not about fortune, it's not about subscribers. Thank you to all the people who do willingly subscribe of your, of your own choice. So, um, there's a lot of funny stuff, a lot of funny stuff going on at the moment, hey? I'm sure you're seeing it all over the media. I know, um, Everyone's getting their daily dose of fear porn, um, unfortunately. So keep watching that show if you want to be dosed up to your eyeballs. But I'll tell you a few things. Every year, every year people die. And every year people are born. Changing of the seasons happens. Those bluebells are all new, aren't they? And they'll die in winter and then new ones will come. And unfortunately, because people aren't exposed to life and death, or they're exposed to life, but they're not exposed to the death side of it. So, any number of people dying can seem to be massive, massively huge. But here in the UK, about, on average, about half a million people die each year, and about half a million people are born each year. And each one who dies, dies of whatever it is that they're going to die of. Be that old age, be that smoking, be that car crash, be that suicide, be that uh, accident at work. Six million ways to die. Choose one. Okay. A percentage of that, a percentage of that figure dies of influenza each year. And that figure roughly is around... 26,000 people of the half a million who die each year so if you take a calculator out and you divide it you will roughly get about or you'll, you'll actually get the accurate thing <laughs> unlike me I'll estimate it because um, I don't have a calculator in front of me but it roughly comes out to about 1600 people a month if you divide 26,000 by 12 okay What's the figures that they're showing again? 
are a percentage of people who die of influenza. Congratulations. But this isn't about that. This is a precursor to things that are to come. And what is to come? What is to come? That is the question. Total economic collapse. A new system will be in place. A new system. And this is the um, kind of the testing ground, if you will, for, for what is to come. So they've created something in, um, in their laboratories. And they now want to inject it into people. So what will happen with that shit? Well, what's going to happen with that shit is they're going to bring it out and they're going to say, oh, everything can go back to normal as long as everyone gets vaccinated. And everyone has these things injected into their arms. And anyone who doesn't is a conspiracy theorist lunatic who wants to continue to spread the disease, cause social unrest, and generally um, destabilise everything. They're bad people. Generally, they're bad people. No, the people who cook that shit up in a lab and want to stick it into people's arms, they're the evil people. They're not the good people, but the media will portray them to be the good people. As the media does with everything. Bearing in mind, this could very much bury my channel, but we'll see. We'll see. So, I'll give you a scenario here. There's ten people in a room, and there's a disease. Because viruses aren't alive. Diseases make viruses. It's like um, an author. An author writes books. The books is the virus. The author is the disease. It works in that fashion. Okay, so there's a disease. Let's say TB. Fuck it, no. We'll give a real disease. TB. TB spread by coughing. People die of uh, TB much more than they die of uh, influenza. But hey ho, they don't vaccinate everyone against TB, do they? So, um, nine of those people go, yeah. I'll be vaccinated. And then they start calling the tenth person evil for wanting to spread the disease. Well, surely if those nine people have been cured by giving this um the the um the antibodies for tuberculosis, what do they have to worry about the tenth person? Well they don't have to worry about it, unless of course the thing that they were given doesn't actually work. Hmm. I tell you, like it might not seem so, it might seem a bit far-fetched, but all of this stuff, or the plan for all of this stuff, was revealed to us. It's in the book of Revelations. Um, I keep saying about the, the five who are wise, the five who were foolish. You're looking at a time now where the churches are all closed. How are you going to go get baptised? How are you going to repent of your sins? You can do that, but how are you going to do the baptising part? You can do it yourself. You can do that yourself. Repentance of sin. Baptism. Change your ways, change your life, follow Christ, it's the only way, and it's not a easy road, it's a rocky road. Now, what will happen if you don't take the injection into your arm? Well, life will suddenly become quite difficult. It's a precursor for the mark of the beast, when that man of perdition comes and releases it upon the world. But you have to believe to understand this stuff really, so hopefully there'll be some who will listen. And hopefully there will be some who um, take kind of heed in, in this. But the churches are close, so you know it's, it's starting to disappear. So the word of God will be taken away in those times. People won't be able to find it and they'll seek for it. The great falling away of the faith. This happened over many, many years. All of this stuff, it's like reading a plan. It doesn't all happen all at once, it's just the plan. The method of how you put it into action, that's what you want to know. Recipe? Method. Well, it's in the same fashion. Right, yeah. So we have some fun times ahead. So we'll see how everything goes. And I hope that you all stay safe. And I hope that you all, um, kind of, maybe wake up a little bit. But... You know, there's time still. It's not much time, but it's going to get fun. And um, what it lets you know in the end, if it makes you sad knowing all of these things or you start to believe and it kind of gets you down, is don't look at that part of it. Look at the end part. Look at the glory part. Look at the bit at the end. Because that's the bit that's really good. And your attention should be focused on that part of it. Because that bit's the best. Um, 
you know, it's it's impossible to describe. Read it for yourself, and you'll see. So yeah, UK Field Ninja. See you guys and girls all next time.